ATM business, BTM business, vending machines, marketing agent, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. It's a game. Business is a game, guys. So I want you to pay attention to the lesson because I'm going to go over the starting steps to actually starting your ATM business. But you can use this and transcribe it to something else. What's going on? Get them here at atmtogether.com. Welcome to another weekly live. I know you guys are probably wondering, like, man, I thought Paul was supposed to see on today. It's the craziest story, right? I literally get a text message from Paul like 11 minutes ago. He's like, get him. Like, get him. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to get into this story in a second, guys, but let's do this. So today, what we're going to be actually be covering is how to sell and install your first ATM, guys, because I understand a lot of you guys are brand new to this industry, so I want to make sure you understand exactly the steps you need to get your first one up and running. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button because we do pre-record this for our YouTube channel. And if you guys have not checked out our YouTube channel, make sure you check it out. So let me break down uh, this lesson, how to sell and install your first ATM, all right? You're taking the first step towards your business. Think about that for a second. You are one of 0.01% of people in the world, guys. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, like, you right now, I'm talking to you. Yes, pay attention. You are one of the minorities when it comes down to starting your business. That's how important this is, guys. So when I bring this up, hey, whether you're starting an ATM business, BTM business, vending machines, marketing agent, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. It's a game. Business is a game, guys. So I want you to pay attention to the lesson because I'm going to go over the starting steps to actually starting your ATM business. But you can use this and transcribe it to something else. Or maybe your family member starts or something like that, guys, because it was something as simple as this that started my entrepreneurship journey. And I guarantee you this will be the start to yours too, guys. Right? I'm going to make this go quick. but do you guys want the strategy guide? We actually have a brand new PDF strategy guide. We break down everything for the business because what typically happens on these lives is, hey, I talk very fast. You don't get to take notes and you got to watch the replay. So if you guys want the strategy guide, right, that breaks down exactly how to start your ATM business, I want you to comment ATM below. Comment ATM. And the reason why I bring this up is because we're going to send you a message on the back end. We're going to say, hey, here's a free PDF strategy guide. Here's the link you can download it at. It covers everything. That way you can just focus on this lesson, guys. Right. So with that being said, the very simple framework you want to use for starting your ATM business, guys, is going to be the four pillars. Copy this down, guys. Four pillars. Right. And the reason I bring this up. The reason I bring this up, guys, is because success favors speed and simplicity scales. Let me tell you guys a quick story, right? I used to make things complicated. I was one of those hard-headed guys. I'm talking about every job I went into. I was like, hey, you know, if you guys ever, if you guys know rap music, like, hey, no 50 buck, right? No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe you guys know the old school stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm telling you right now, I went against the grain. I was like, I don't care. You're saying this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure out my own. Way. I'm going to make it so complex, so fancy. And at the end of the day, it came from insecurity. It came from insecurity, guys. I'm telling you right now, I'm testifying to you guys right now. It came from insecurity because I thought like, man, I have something to prove. And I didn't even know who I needed to prove it to. I had no idea. I was like, man, I don't know why I have this chip on my shoulder every single day. And it's every job I go into. Why is it that? It's like, wait a second. Every single person's having an issue with me at every single job. Like, what's going on? How many of you guys know somebody like that? People make things complicated for no reason. And you have to understand, hey, some of the most successful businesses are extremely simple. Look at Apple, for example. Apple is one of the most valued companies in the world. And they're like, hey, we don't even want buttons on our phone. And people were giving a hard time. Like, you got to have all these buttons. It's a Nokia. It's a flip phone. No, 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 no. They're like, we want the simplest possible because people favor simplicity because they understand that scales. So here are the first four pillars for starting your actual ATM business, right? So number one, guys, write this down. It's going to be your LLC and your EIN. Your LLC and your EIN, guys. And I can group those together because they're basically together at the end of the day. So when you're starting to get your LLC, I can't tell you how important this is. The first thing you're gonna need for this is the mindset to remember, hey, I'm trying to protect my assets. 
because you're building a business that's going to scale and you understand it's going to scale. So at the end of the day, wouldn't it behoove of you to actually protect it, form it the right way? So that way, if something happens, somebody trips on a sidewalk, somebody does like a fender bender or something, they don't try to grow up your entire business. So when you're starting your business, your actual entity, there's a few things you need to remember, right? The first thing you want to do is actually know who's a part of that business, right? Because when you're filing online, it makes it much faster. And then the second thing you're going to want to remember is going to be, hey, you know, at the end of the day, am I going to do a virtual business address or a physical address? And just to break down the, the simple, simple breakdown of this, guys, it's uh, I keep saying simple because it's so simple. Do I want to save money and file at my home address or do I want to actually get a virtual address that nobody knows where I live? So I'm private online. It's your choice at the end of the day, guys. All right. And in case you guys didn't know, I have an LLC guide, a PDF guide separate from that strategy guide. So if you want a copy of that one, break down the LLC comment LLC below. And one of our team members will send that guide to you. It breaks down everything I'm talking about right now. Okay. So with that being said, you get your LLC, right? You realize, hey, I have the people that are going to be a part of it. I determined it's going to be an actual LLC. I'm filing at my home address. And then you need what's called the NAICS code, right? The NAICS code, guys, it's a fancy acronym that you don't need to know. It's a waste of your time. Don't worry about it. The NAICS code for the ATM business. You guys ready for it? Are you guys ready for it? I don't think you're ready for it. All right, the NAICS code, guys, of the ATM business is 522320. 522320, guys. And the reason I bring this up is because it's one of the most confused things that people have. They're like, hey, where do I find this code at? You Google online, it's all this different stuff. It says clearinghouse, it says financial institution. It is 522320. And this is after installing 3,000 ATMs, guys. Trust me, write that down, right? So you get your NAICS code, you file online, and you want to use a third party filing service. Whether you use Inkfile, whether you use um, Zendesk or whatever, just make sure you use a third party filing service. And the reason why is because they shouldn't be charging you anything, it should be free. But after that, it's very simple. You have a dashboard, they're gonna give you all your information and you get your paperwork right back to you, okay? So you get your LLC, then you get your EIN letter, right? How many of you guys want me to save you $100? Right now, a little bit, I'm gonna save you $100. I want you to comment, save me, all right? Comment, save me below. If you're serious, because I got, man, I'm. Look at my eyes. I'm hurting right now. I've been on the computer for about 14 hours, so I wasn't expecting to do this live, guys. So I'm trying to save you some money from lessons I learned starting this business, guys, right? All right, let's see what we've got. So we've got some engagement. If we have some engagement, I can do All right, all right. So I'm going to tell you something right now. When you're getting your EIN, you should pay this much. Pay this much. And here's how. What typically happens is when you look up the word EIN to start, you get bombarded with listings and they all look like the same website and they're charging. We're going to say $70, $100, $300. I got a message last week. Guy was like, hey, get him. What the heck, man? It's like, what's, what's going on? Is everything okay? He's like, dude, you said it's supposed to be free. I'm like, yeah, it is. It's like, look at this receipt. I was like, wait a second. $250 he paid to file his EIN. I was like, dude. We're like, what's going on? Why should you pay that? He's like, you told me to go to the website. Like, that's not the website. Pay attention. So the $100 tip I'm going to tell you right now, when you're filing your EIN, the only website you go to is irs.gov, irs.gov, right? And you have to pay attention to the GOV at the end because what these people do is they make all these websites that look just like it. It's like a, it's like a, it's like this. It's like a clone to get them showing up. And it's like, hey, guys, make sure you pay $1,000 for your EIN. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like that. I'm telling you right now. And what happens is people pay this amount. And if they didn't do it, guess what? Why would they have the website? So it works for a reason, right? So make sure you go straight to the IRS website. It is absolutely free. If you follow my LLC lesson, you're going to have all the information you need. And guess what? It's free. I think I gave you a six. So it's free. And in addition to that, it only takes you like six minutes, all right? So that, that's the six I was looking for, guys, right? So that's your LLC and yeah, yeah. So pillar number two is going to be your bank, right? So what I'm going to do, guys, because some of you guys want to find the bank on your own. So how many of you guys want me to tell you the exact one liner I use to cold call banks? I want you to call comment script. Comment script below. If you need help with spelling, it's going to be S C I uh, no S T I uh, P R T or something, right? <laughs> I'm not even good at spelling. That should tell you something. I run the company. So at the end of the day, this is the first thing I do when I'm calling banks, guys, because you have to find a bank that's going to work with your ATM business. Not every single bank's going to work. 
So the first thing I do, I call them and you got to be official. What you need to do, if you really need to get that mindset in, throw on a suit, throw on a lady dress, whatever, throw on some formal clothes and get on that phone like this. And like, hey, I'm looking to open a business checking account to collect surcharges, or you can say commissions to keep it simple. So I'm looking to open a business checking account to collect commissions for my ATM business. That's it. How many of you guys need me to repeat that? Because it's pretty kind of long. I said one liner. Comment, repeat below. Comment, repeat if you need me to repeat it. Because I look like, I think some of you guys already got it. Yeah, some of you guys are saying. So say it one more time. I'm looking to open a business checking account to collect commissions for my ATM business. That's it. Let them respond. Have that awkward pause, just like this. And they're either going to say yes, they're going to say no, or the better answer, which is going to be, hold on, let me double check. And they're going to come back with more questions. If they say yes, or let me check, go there in person. And the reason why, guys, is because everything in life is negotiable. I'm telling you right now, everything in life is negotiable. And the reason I bring this up is because, hey, it's like anything. Hey, cash rules everything around me, as they say, right? If you have cash in front of you, people will change their mind. So when it comes down to it with a business checking account, sometimes they say no, but you go in there and like, hey, I'm looking to uh, get a credit card with you guys. I'm looking to maybe get a loan in the future. I'm looking to get a car loan with you guys. Like, I got to start with the business first. And they're going to be like, hold on, I'll be right back. Talk to somebody. All right, all right, we can make it happen for you. So that's the biggest thing. But when it comes down to looking for banks for the ATM business, the reason why they don't work with it, because first of all, your competition, that's reason number one, your competition for that bank. Your whole business model is what? Your entire business model is you saying, I'm going to charge customers to use my ATM, which competes with their ATM. So they're like, no, we don't want to work with you. And second of all, they consider you high risk. The ATM business is known as a high risk business. And the reason why I bring this up is because there were some bad actors back in the day. If you guys look up the news in San Diego, one of the main reasons why they shut down ATM accounts across the California from people to use was because like a year ago, some guy tried to do money laundering and we're like, bro, it's 2022. What are you doing? Like literally you went in there, you used Apple Pay. Like, come on, man. So people will be doing dumb stuff when it comes down to the ATM business. So when it comes down to it, that's the main reason why banks don't want to work with you. So if you're going to be cold calling banks to figure out one that works with you, the rule of thumb is this. First of all, be transparent. Tell them what you're doing. Don't open a personal checking account. Don't lie about it. Just tell them what you're doing. Second of all, the second rule of thumb for business accounts for the ATM business is going to be use smaller local banks. Always use smaller local banks. And the reason why is because they're more likely, they're lenient, they're willing to work with you. Big banks, Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, 99% of them, they won't work with your account. What they'll do is they'll have a corporate policy. There's like Wells Fargo, for example, they can override it. And I know this from inside knowledge, the director of business accounts or whatever can override it, but the likelihood of you ever getting a hold of them, it's not going to happen. So stick with the local banks, guys, right? So I got to get right through this. So that's pillar number two. So number one is LLC AIN. Number two is going to be your actual business checking account. Number three is going to be your processor and your ATM. Okay. So when it comes down to processing, I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to give you a 20 second lesson. Processing is literally just the network that connects your ATM to the customer's account and to your business checking account. All right. So I'm going to break this down, how this works. Customer A is going to go to your machine. Your machine has your cash in it. You're typically going to put about $1,000 to $3,000 in it, but most machines will hold up to $20,000 or more. One of our team members, Brandon, and actually one of our other team members, Gianni, he has ATMs at some uh, some strip clubs. And keep it real. Those machines hold up to like $60,000, but those are outliers. Most ATM actually only holds, and I don't say only holds, but most ATMs will typically only have about 1,000 to 3,000 because you can rotate through the same cash. It comes back, right? So ATM number one, you have out of 20 that you're going to. So ATM number one, you actually place at the location. You put about 1,000 to $3,000 in that machine. Customer A goes there on Monday. They're going to pull out $20. They get charged a fee, which we call the surcharge, right? Typically, it's about $3 for your surcharge. So you just made $3 in profit and the $20 goes back to your account. So the $20 and the $3, they all go back to your account the next day, right? So if five people use your account a day, think about that for a second. That's $15. Well, if there's 30 days in a month or like, think I think November has like 31 days, but if there's 30 days in a month times 
$15, that's $450 in profit. Think about that. That's not too bad. Most rental properties that cost like $500,000 don't make that in profit, right? So the processing network is the thing that's going to send that money back to you. It's your processor. So with processing, you have to remember a few things. There's the fatal three, as I like to call them. Write this down, guys, or comment below if you need this copy. The fatal three, right? It's going to be contracts, surcharge split, and hidden fees. The fatal three of any processor. Contract, surcharge split, and hidden fees. You need to avoid all those, guys. So what that means is you need to have no contracts. You need to make sure you're keeping all of your surcharge. 100% that profit goes to you. You're working for it. And the third thing is going to be hidden fees. They get you. They're like, hey, if this happens, PCI compliance and that, no, 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 no. You're like, hey, if that contract's too long, that means they're probably lying to you and there's too much stuff hitting in there. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. We've done multi-million dollar deals with just a handshake. So if they got to have a contract like this long, hey, somehow or somehow they're going to get you. All right. So make sure that's the case, guys. Okay. Now your ATM. The number one question we get with ATMs is this, guys. Should I buy used? Get them. Mike, our, our processor, Mike, should I buy brand new or should I buy used? I found this ATM on, on Facebook Marketplace. It looks like a dinosaur, but hey, man, the dude said it's $200 and it works like new, right? So the first thing I do is I show him the serial number. I was like, hey, you know that company sold like 50 million machines, right? Yeah. So why does the serial number say 16 on there? That's the 16th machine they sold like 15 years ago. I'm just kidding, guys. So the re main reason why we say, guys, in the ATM business is when you're new, buy brand new. And the main reason why, guys, is because you don't know what happens to the ATM. ATMs, hey, they look brand new even if you had 50,000 people use them. Because think about it. Imagine, imagine multiple people go to an actual machine, right? And they're like, hey, customer number one, right? Customer number one in your machine. They go in there. They actually put their debit card in there. And then from there, 50 more people, 100 more people, 1,000 more people. How is the outside of that machine going to look any different? It's inside a store. So you could have had 100,000 transactions on a machine and the guy's saying, oh, I only had it for like two months. So that's why we say there's no Carfax. There's no history reports. We highly recommend you buy brand new guys, right? So that's all I'm going to talk about for ATMs. Now the location. I got a question. How many guys would want a guide that I got directly from our location finder team? Just so you guys know, I flew to Europe to talk to our location finder team. Full on operation. It was craziness. I went in there. They had to like, I had to knock three times. I had to like go through the peephole. Say, hey, you guys gonna let me in? And they, they let in. They're like, all right, come on, go through this dungeon. And then there's like 56 different microphones and they're just yelling at people on the phone, guys. I'm just kidding, all right? So comment location below. I want you to comment location. And the reason why I bring this up is at the end of the day, we break down the basics of everything we do. We break down everything we do. We just are so efficient at it that we're not worried about competition. So comment location. We have a location guide that breaks down what I look for in BTM locations, which is the same for ATM locations. Okay. So here are the multiple things you need to look for when it comes down to your ATM location. Write this down, guys. I, I got this memorized. When I go into stores and merchants, I know immediately what I'm looking for. I do a calculation, right? So the rule of thumb is this for the ATM business. It does not have to be cash only. And here's the reason why I bring this on. On average, some of the best performing locations in the nation, they're not dispensaries, they're not strip clubs, guys. They're gas stations. They are gas stations. And the reason why is because they're synonymous with ATMs. Think about that. Right now, if you're in the middle of nowhere in some city you don't understand, you're like, hey, I need to go to an ATM. Where are you going to think of? Gas station. Our team member, Brandon, has some gas stations that do 11,000 transactions a month. Do the math on that for a second. 11,000. Truck stops, too. Truck stops are phenomenal. They're the same thing. 11,000 transactions, we'll just say by times three. That's $33,000 in profit a month, guys. Think about that for a second. So you want to look for cash-driven locations, not cash-only. It doesn't need to be cash-only. A lot of people make that mistake. They're like, hey, is it cash-only? It doesn't matter. The question you have to ask yourself, the one question that surpasses everything in the ATM business, is there a need for cash at the location? The reason why we look for these, I'm seeing some laughs in these comments, guys. You guys are wild. I'm like, 
I'm, I'm not, I can't do this anymore, guys. So, so, the, so the main reason why, guys, people use ATMs is quick access to their cash. That's it. Very quick access to the cash. You got to keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid, as I say. So there's that. And then it's avoid processing fees when credit cards, chargeback um, risk when it comes down to merchants. And then also they do cash advance fees or if you want to do cash back, there's fees. So guess what happens? Guess the type of locations that do that? Gas stations, liquor stores, smoke shops, nail salons, barber shops, BFWs, everything you think of, tire supply stores. They're phenomenal locations, even used car dealerships when they sell cheaper cars, right? So with that being said, I see a braid, braiding salon. Nice. So the reason I bring this up is because you got to look for cash driven locations when you're looking for the location, right? And the way you want to think about it is this. A gas station or a liquor store, for example, they need to have a lot of credit cards. So somebody goes in there at 10 p.m. to use your ATM. Now they want to buy a lot of ticket in California. You can only use cash. So what do you do? you got to use the ATM because if you want to buy that lotto ticket because it's at $50 billion, what are you going to do? You're going to use that, guys, right? So always look for cash-driven locations. Look for as much foot traffic as possible and longer operating hours, right? So with that being said, guys, those are the four pillars of the ATM business. I need to get to the next lesson because I'm way behind and I got some, some good stuff, guys, right? So a uh, quick question for you guys. How many of you guys are excited for this next, next lesson? All right, I'm actually going to tell you how to actually sell ATMs 